Who do I want to acquire at the deadline, Logan? Um, again, I find it hard for me to say who I would want to acquire when the Leafs aren't even playing the strategy that I want to see played. Like on a fundamental level, from a coaching perspective, GM perspective, I don't know whose it is, but on a fundamental level, I disagree with just about everything the Leafs are doing right now. You know what I mean? Other than their offense. Their offense is so good. Their offense is so good that I am willing... To, like, I, would, I would rather keep them all together and figure out a way to get that whole team to defend better than try to find defensive players that are going to play my style but not be able to do what Matthews can do, not be able to do what Marner can do, not be able to do what Nylander can do. Those guys are so good at that kind of stuff, so good, that I want them there. It's just everybody's got to be better. they got to be more responsible. Stop mucking around. I've told you before, why is Nylander making a, a, a blind backhand pass to nobody in the offensive zone to create a turnover, which causes a 2-1-1 for a cross-crease one-timer? That happened, guys. I didn't make that up. You know what I mean? How am I supposed to know what we need when guys like Nylander are doing stupid things like that? You know? Because they're also so good that if they could just learn to be more responsible with the puck, then we could know where the real problems are and then we can address those. But the whole team. The whole team. They're so offensive-minded. They refuse to think any other way. And I just don't see it. I don't see enough defensive habits there. Right? To, to, to be the super strong team that they can be. But the beauty part is what I'm talking about can happen overnight. Right overnight, you know? Again, just, if you don't get it one of these days, you just have to get it in time for the playoffs. You know? So, yeah, so nobody at the deadline? Like, yeah, I don't know. Nobody, man. Or everybody. Like, I gotta know what's out there. I This GM stuff, it's so hard, guys. We're here in Flurry. Should we get Flurry? Flurry's had an inconsistent playoffs too, man. Let's not act like the guy is pure talent all the time. How many times was he blamed for Pittsburgh losses in the playoffs? Because they say he single-handedly lost it for them. You know? And I'm not saying that those people are right when they say that. But what I'm saying is, if you're going by rumors alone, you know, uh, everyone's talking about Flurry like he could single-handedly win these guys a cup now. What? Like, he's the missing piece that's going to finally get them there. Yeah, maybe, honestly. He's that good a goalie at times. But which flurry do we have? I don't know. Whereas, like, Carey Price is Carey Price is Carey Price. You know what I mean? When push comes to shove, he may have bad regular seasons. But you put Carey Price in the playoffs, and he'll price you right out of things if you're not careful. You know what I mean? That's what he does. And I knew it was a potential last year. I knew it. And when we saw it, I was like, well, there it is. Of course, of course, Carey Price did that to us because he's Carey freaking Price. That's that's a, that's an elite guy right there. So uh, I wouldn't say they're perfect, but it's like you know who are you gonna get if you can? All right, look, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. If they refuse, if you, if the players on the team right now actually are not capable of playing the style I want. Maybe Keith and I agree on everything. Maybe he and I agree on every single fundamental of what should be going on out there. But his guys just aren't doing it. No matter what he does, he can't get them to learn. So if you can find me a couple of defensemen that will lift a friggin' stick in front of their own net that's not one of their own team, a forward that might do the same as well too, lift a stick once in a while that's not your own team, all right? <laughs> Tie up guys so they can't get shots. Force their opponents to make weak decisions rather than chance everything and have them get great chances. You know what I mean? If they could find me players, both forward and defense, that could do that stuff, that's who I would want. And if you could find me the best goaltender you can on the market as well too, without having to give up very much, if you don't give up very much for a top-end goalie, fine. But I doubt, I doubt any, I doubt any goalie is gonna, is gonna fix this problem. There is like two elite goalies in the NHL right now. I'm talking goalie so good that, like, everybody talks about him. You know? And even if you disagree on who those two are, everybody really realistically says only about two or three. Come on. And then there's a lot of other guys that are right in the same category, and I don't see too many that are really going to improve your team that much. That's what I'm saying, guys. It's okay. It's okay to, like, 
appreciate the talent that's on every other team. You know, you can you can follow along with with other teams and see their stories are a lot like ours. In Toronto, there's a lot of people that just focus on the Leafs as if they're the only team that exists. So, you know, Leaf stories are, are so unique and so personalized. Nobody would ever understand what it's like being a Toronto fan. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. We're not special as fans. And to suggest otherwise is just completely stupid. You know what I mean? Like, Montreal fans are just as passionate. Honestly, there's Arizona fans just as passionate as us. Because if they love the game, they love the game. There may not be as many. You know what I mean? There may not be as many. But Nashville fans, you know, Predator fans and stuff, they love their team as much as we love ours. You know? So we can't forget that. Right? Um... So when we see our team and we want to analyze them as well, too, you know, you got to keep that in mind that like our struggles that we witness, it's the same things that other teams see, too. So everybody needs to chill. Come out of your bubble. Watch other teams. It's fun. It's fun getting to know the players. If you get a chance, just watch some highlights of other teams. You know, catch the last five minutes of somebody else's game. Like, it's fun watching hockey, too, right? I guess this is because I'm a Leafs fan. and I saw that decade with no playoffs that I'm just kind of used to, like, checking out other teams come playoff time. <laughs> You know? So I developed a passion for that, too. I fell in love with the game again, and then I could fall in love with the Leafs all over again. And it's been beautiful ever since, man. Woo! You know what I mean? There's no such thing as a negative day uh, uh, when you're my type of Leafs fan. And we get to watch hockey, and we get to enjoy these games, and we get to come back here and talk about it with special friends like Frags and Leslie and Logan and Nico. You know what I mean? And everybody else. And everybody else that comes out. And AKZ, I know, is out. You know what I mean? All kinds of you goofballs. Blue and white showed up. Right? New meme idea. You sh- you sh- shall yeah, it's you shall, right? You shall not pass. You guys had that. Somebody put that up as a meme. When you guys already did that, man. I can't be copying nobody. And Thievis was here, by the way. If he's still hanging around. Legenic. You know? Thanks, guys. It's real special what we get to do. You know, let's let's always enjoy it. Let's always enjoy it, guys, and we're going to enjoy it again after the next game, too. Listen up. So after the next game, I'm taking the weekend off, okay? I'm going to be in another city with my family, so there ain't going to be no stream after that Saturday night game, all right? But chill. I'll be back after that. You know how I do things. Never forget about you, right? You got to take care of your family first, everybody out there, right? So thank you very very much, guys, and I'll see you after the next one. Sound good? Peace!